Welcome to Code Tech and Tutorials. If you're new here, please subscribe and don't forget to like. This is my PC I've been using for about the last five years. And the old motherboard finally gave out. So I had to do some upgrades and this is what all these clips are from. Is me doing the upgrade. I've sped it up quite a bit because there is a lot of video. But basically what I do here is, well, here I'm removing the old board and you can see it is an H11, well let's see, H110M gigabyte board. Now this thing is fine, really, just something glitched out on me after a while and it kept crashing and I seemed to have figured out it was coming from the motherboard. So I went ahead and got a new motherboard and this time I got a gaming quality one through ASUS. You can see down there. Here I am removing the heatsink from the old one and this was all quite a pain to do but I've done this sort of thing a ton throughout my life and I love doing this sort of thing so wanted to share with you guys some of this interesting stuff there's the old CPU now something interesting happened here I thought that I could use the same CPU so that one you see in the video right now is an i7700 K and it does slot correctly into this new motherboard but this new board wants 8000 or 9000 series chips so ultimately this didn't end up booting although it fits so I went through a lot of stuff here that I didn't need to go through because I had to change out the CPU anyway but I did find out a few things so the main thing is well this little micro ATX board here doesn't fit this heat sink this whole bracket around it and everything it keeps hitting all these heat sinks on the side uh, of this motherboard so I was able to like squeeze it in there and really use some tricks to do all that but I found out eventually that this wasn't really a feasible option I had to remove all these side brackets to even get it to fit and be able to latch and found out there is M2 slots on the front and back of this motherboard so that's super cool it's a nice option to have but here I am taking off yet another side bracket I hope you guys enjoy this sort of video I know it's way different from the other stuff I do here but it's something I really enjoy and it's kind of where I got my roots. I used to build computers all the time and toy with them and tinker with them and tinker with electronics a ton when I was growing up and when I discovered computers it was a whole new world of tinkering that I've been into for a long time so yeah you can see I'm just kind of it looks like I'm just manhandling things and that's because I've done this so many times that I'm not really afraid of anything um, yeah so yeah I got it all this heat sink all mounted here pop my hard drive back in here I love this case you can just do so much with it and it seems to fit everything for a micro ATX case it's like a little gaming box a little power box this ended up being a several day process like after this day and figuring out that the CPU didn't work I had to come back at it another day after swapping out CPUs. I had to order a new CPU, sold the old one, and ended up being a pretty even trade. And then I also had to get a new heatsink. This heatsink wasn't going to work in the long run. But I wanted to see if it would at least boot with this processor. There's only four mounting screws on these small ITX motherboards, one on each corner. You have 
got to have a magnetic screwdriver for this sort of process. Otherwise you're going to drop screws all over your case. Getting these little screws in there is more difficult than it seems. You really have to carefully line it up. If you drop the screw it goes down in the case somewhere and that's no fun to fish it out. So I was being super careful there and didn't drop any but I have done it before. And now I'm just plugging in all these cables into their proper spots. Some of which aren't immediately evident. This motherboard I actually got from an eBay auction. It was a pretty good deal for what it was, but it didn't come with any extra parts, including the manual. Luckily though, that's all online. So the things that weren't labeled on the motherboard, I was able to just look up. But for the most part, it was pretty standard stuff and I was able to plug in all the main rails. The thing about pushing these cables in on this motherboard is there's only four mounting screws. So you gotta be real careful about not pushing too hard and bowing the motherboard. So there I was looking at all where everything lines up to plug in all these cables for the front panel and everything. I only do some minimal wire man management here, not really too concerned. This is just to see if it boots really. Which as you already know, because I've already said, it doesn't end up booting. It just flashes with a CPU error code. So another nice thing about this new motherboard is it has error codes right on the board. So if it doesn't boot and you don't get a screen, you can at least look at the flashing codes and reference them in the manual if you need to. Basically it had a CPU error here eventually, which I will show as soon as I get all these cables plugged in. I know, riveting stuff, watching a guy plug in cables. So what I was doing off screen here that you can't really tell is I was lining up all of these little pins to be a nice solid block that matches block they fit into on the motherboard. This is something I like to do, but I don't actually see many people do it. And then after that I used thermal tape to make a solid block that can just be pulled in and out as a single instance of a cable rather than a bunch of end piece ones. And I just nipped the tape there that was extra. Gotta plug in all my SATA cables. There are four hard drives in this machine. As you might know I do this YouTube stuff and it ends up taking a lot of recording. Space. Yeah. Anyway, I got distracted there. GTX. 1080 Founders Edition. This is a pretty old card at this point, but as you can see in this micro ATX case and with these motherboards, there's a perfect spot for the GPU, a full-size GPU. And here I went ahead and powered it on and it would just immediately shut off. So here's a look at the flashing code. It happened super quick there, you couldn't really see it, but it basically flashed bad CPU. And now we're on to a new day here. I went ahead and ordered a new heat sink that was a water cooler. Now this had to happen basically because I couldn't fit any traditional air flow uh, heat sink on there as you saw before. So I ordered this uh, up here brand and it comes with a 240 millimeter uh, thermal thing radiator. Thermal thing and the fans are over on the right. So what I was doing here is I was basically pre-planning and seeing how I had to mount it. Now I kind of figured out that these tubes and the wires and the computer and the way everything flows 
There was really only one way it would fit, and it was in this direction, I believe. So I had to make sure all the screw holes would line up, because I did have to mount it still. And I still had to put the fans on as well, but these cords and stuff were blocking. And actually, this front fan right here was blocking. So there was no way this radiator was going to fit in here with this fan in, oddly enough. I don't know, I get my head in the way, I didn't realize I was doing that. So I had to remove this fan, and it was really difficult. As you can see, I couldn't get a screwdriver down there because of the way it opens, but I was able to use the old uh, crank technique with a pair of pliers and something else. Yeah, interesting angle. I had no idea I was recording like that. But yeah, this was actually really difficult to get this fan out because of how little space there was to work with these screws. But I did eventually get it, pull it out of there. I really don't want to remove the front fan, but I didn't see any other option. I couldn't flip this around the other way, it would hit the heat sinks uh, on the motherboard, I think. But that way it worked fine. So with that all planned, I decided, okay, let's go ahead and get these fans mounted on here, and then we'll get the whole thing mounted on the case. So I'm mounting these fans that came with it. And I know everybody's probably going to say the same thing in the comments. You should never use an electric screwdriver on computers. And I'm aware of that, but uh, I'm a, remember, I'm a professional. I did not mess up any of the screws. Actually, I don't, you know, I don't like fully torque it with the uh, electric screwdriver. Of course not. But when it's like a really long uh, job, see, as you can see, I'm custom tightening it with my hand. I was just using that power screwdriver to get it initially set into a, a loose state and then I would manually tighten them with my hand later because if you just use the uh, the power drill the whole time you'll strip the screws out so you don't want to do that. Typically it's best just to not do, use them at all but I'm so used to this that I feel pretty comfortable using one and I don't feel I'm going to mess up anything but basically you can only initiate all the uh, the screws with them. You don't want to tighten with them, is the point, even at the lowest setting. So I'm, I went ahead and started mounting the radiator. This was a real pain to do, actually, because I had to like hold it from the back while screwing in. The first two were the hardest, but once I got a couple of the corner ones started, the rest were already lined up, so I could kind of keep going. But it was interesting because I had to push from the back of the radiator a lot and you know push right on the corners. But it took a total of eight screws to get this radiator mounted, and with those fans on the back already set, it's pretty much in a state where it's ready to get put on the motherboard. But this got a little tricky here. I forget what was going on. I think I was trying to get that under bracket set correctly, the bracket that I was putting on earlier underneath the motherboard. Yeah, I think I just had to turn the cam off. But as you can see, I got it set started screwing all these in you want to cross thread and I was a little worried there's not going to be space for the RAM there and it's pretty tight there's just barely spa space for the RAM I was pretty nervous about the whole thing trying to figure out what to do ultimately it did rub across the cables but it wasn't so significant that I thought it was going to hurt anything so I just left it and it's pretty packed in there as you can see I know wobbly video sped up video but that, that's how she is right now and I just wanted to see if it booted and I did get it to boot on first try which is always a great success and you can see all the specs there there we go we got to the the BIOS so that's always what you want on the first boot is just being able to get to the BIOS is a great success so it looks like everything is keeping cool and everything seems to be functioning I don't see any problems here so at this point I think I just boot to my old Windows, which it doesn't like at first. I have to do a quick repair. Uh, yeah, I forget what happened here, but yeah, I just rebooted. I didn't even do the repair. And it did boot up and have to find all my new devices and all that stuff, but it booted right up into Windows. New motherboard, new CPU. Wow, do I love this case. I'm glad I could keep it. I was worried I would have to swap it out. But, I'm going to keep using the Corsair 250D. They're really hard to find now. You can't buy them new anymore. And that's the video. Special shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.